Hello everyone and welcome to lecture today. Um, I'm very very excited to continue our foray into Taylor series and uh, in this lecture I just plan on going over uh, a number of different more examples and uh, some basic applications of Taylor series uh, that are very uh, neat and interesting. So for the first example that I want to consider uh, this is going to be an example of uh, a Taylor series that's not a Maclaurin series, or a Taylor series that's not expanded around the origin, or the, the zero, x not equals zero, um, because I want to make sure that you understand how to use the general formula. Um, remember that, uh, in general, uh, if we have a function f of x in the Taylor series, expanded around a general point x naught in the last lecture we showed that the coefficient ck is given by this nice formula the kth derivative of this function at the expansion point divided by k factorial and um, we did a number of different Maclaurin series uh, in the previous lecture uh, and I showed that you know for relatively basic functions this formula is very nice to use and apply um, but uh, you know I also showed how for more complicated functions sometimes it's better to use the simpler functions Taylor series and then um, use various results for manipulating power series to obtain the, the Taylor series that we want for the unknown function. And uh, technically, this is before, should go before the example right here. So the example that I want to look at is the function f of x is equal to the natural log of x. And uh, well, we know that this function is defined for uh, any value of x um, strictly greater than 1. So for x strictly greater than 1, we can do the natural logarithm of x. Um, so we certainly won't be able to expand this function uh, at um, a center point of 0, uh, because the function is undefined at 0. And not only that, uh, you know, it's undefined for negative values. So uh, what I'm going to choose as my expansion point is, uh, and you can you can choose in general for a function any point uh, for an expansion point. Um, however, what I'm, I'm going to choose is the point x naught is equal to one, because we know that this function is uh, relatively uh, simple at x naught equals one. Natural natural log of one is equal to zero. Um, so this is a, a natural expansion point for this function, or for the Taylor series of this function. So if we look at the derivative of this function, the first derivative will be 1 over x. The second derivative will be negative 1 over x squared. The third derivative will be 2 over x cubed. The fourth derivative will be 2 times 3 times negative 1 over x to the fourth. And hopefully you're starting to see a pattern here, but um, if you're not, you can do the derivative a couple more times and the pattern should become apparent. The nth derivative of this function is um, always going to be negative 1. to the power n plus 1 
times. And minus one. Factorial over x to the power n. And that matches um, each one of these, the first derivative, the second derivative, the third derivative, and so on and so forth. So that means for n greater than or equal to 1, cn is going to be the nth derivative at the expansion point, in this case our expansion point is 1, divided by n factorial, which is going to be negative 1 to the n plus 1 times n minus 1 factorial over 1 to the n divided by n factorial, where I've just plugged in 1 uh, to the formula for uh, fn, of, fn of x. Um, and this simplifies really nicely because you have 1 over 1, 1 over 1 squared, 2 over 1 cubed, right? 1 to the power n is always 1. Furthermore, we can note that uh, n minus 1 factorial divided by n factorial will always be equal to 1 over n uh, using the properties of the factorial function. So our nth Taylor coefficient will be negative 1 to the n plus 1 divided by n. And there you have it. We have nice uh, expression for any one of our Taylor coefficients. Um, specifically this Taylor series for f of x. Remember, we're doing the Taylor series for the natural logarithm of x here. This will be equal to c0 plus c1 times x minus 1 plus c2 times x minus 1 squared plus c3 times x minus 1 cubed and so on and so forth. So when we plug in our coefficients, uh, remember that uh, natural log function at 1, c0 is going to be the uh, natural log function at 1 over 0 factorial. This is going to be the 0 over 1 or 0. So c0 is 0. And then we have this very nice formula, negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n for all of the other coefficients that we found by taking all the derivatives of the natural log function. So c1 is going to be negative 1 to the 1 plus 1, which is uh, negative negative 1 to the 2, or positive 1 over 1. So this is just going to be x minus 1 plus c2, which is going to be uh, negative 1 to the 2 plus 1, or negative 1. So negative one half, because when n is two, you have a, a two in the denominator, times x minus one squared plus be one third times x minus one cube. You'll have negative one fourth x minus one to the power four, and so on and so forth, all the way to infinity. So this is the Taylor series expansion for the natural logarithm function expanded around the point uh, x0 equals 1. The closed form expression is going to be the summation from n equals 1 
to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 times x minus 1 to the n over n. Now, um, this is only going to be valid within the radius of convergence, and uh, we know exactly how to go through and solve for this. Right, this is only going to be valid when the absolute value of x minus the expansion point is strictly less than the radius of convergence. And we can go through and evaluate this by taking the limit as k goes to infinity of ck over ck plus 1 in absolute value. And so this is going to be equal to the limit as k goes to infinity of ck is uh, negative 1 to the k plus 1 plus 1 over k plus 1 over negative 1 to the k plus 1 over k. The absolute value uh, takes care of both of these negative 1 to, to an exponent. So this limit becomes the limit as k goes to infinity. of k over k plus 1, which one application of L'Hopital's rule will show us that this is equal to 1. So the radius of convergence of this series is equal to 1, and that means that the interval of convergence is going to be when x minus 1 is between negative r and positive r, or x is between 1 plus 1, which is 2, or an upper bound, and a lower bound of negative 1 plus 1, or 0. And uh, by testing at the boundary points, we can show that 0 diverges, which makes a lot of sense because the natural logarithm function isn't defined at 0. Um, so we have uh, uh, no convergence at 0. But uh, you can go through and show that this series will converge conditionally at x equals 2. So the interval of the convergence is the open interval from 0 to 2. And there you have it. This is an application of the general Taylor series formula, uh, expanding a function around uh, a different point than 0. So for the next example that I want to go over, I want to uh, talk about how to get, um, in some sense, it's a generalization of the geometric series formula. Uh, and you know, you'll remember that the geometric series formula is that 1 over 1 minus x is the power series uh, x to the k for k from 0 to infinity. And this is valid when x is strictly less than 1. And uh, this allows us to get right, other uh, kind of generalizations of this using the substitution theorem um, very, very nicely, as we've seen for a lot of different examples. Uh, so a simple example would be looking at 1 over 1 plus x, which is the same thing as 1 over 1 minus negative x. So from the substitution theorem, because negative x is a continuous function, this is going to be the same thing as the geometric series with negative x plugged in for uh, our r value. This is the same thing as the summation from k equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times x to the k. 
And just like before, this is valid when the absolute value of negative x is less than 1, or when the absolute value of x is less than 1. So the idea here is, uh, what I want to do is figure out how to get the, the Taylor series for things of the form you know, 1 plus x to the power 1 half, or 1 plus x to the negative 1 half, which is the same thing as 1 over the square root of 1 plus x. Or say, 1 plus x to the 3 halves, negative 3 halves, which is 1 over 1 plus x to the 3 halves. I want to kind of get at how to get the Taylor series for uh, this whole general class of um, functions. Specifically, what we'll look at is getting the Taylor series for the function f of x equal to 1 plus x to the alpha. And the reason why we're going to look at this is because we'll be able to get a general formula uh, that holds uh, really for any real value of alpha that we want to plug in to it, uh, which will be very powerful uh, because functions like this, like this, uh, like this, appear all the time in applications. So uh, the quickest method of doing this, I think, is to just go through and use uh, the straightforward uh, brute force method of getting the Taylor series coefficients. And specifically, this is going to be the Maclaurin series. Expansion. around x naught equals 0 is our expansion point. Um, this is the easiest one to calculate because the, these derivatives are going to simplify very, very nicely uh, when we go through and take the derivative of such a function. The first derivative of this function is going to be alpha times 1 plus x to the alpha minus 1. The second derivative of this function is going to be alpha times alpha minus 1 times 1 plus x to the alpha minus 2. The third derivative of f with respect to x is going to be alpha times alpha minus 1 times alpha minus 2 times 1 plus x to the alpha minus 3, and so on and so forth. This is going to continue all the way to the nth derivative of the function f, which is going to be the product of alpha times alpha minus 1 times alpha minus 2, all the way up to alpha minus n plus 1 times x, or 1 plus x, the alpha minus n. And you can see that in these first three terms here, that this is the general, going to be the general formula that you get. Um, so remember that the nth Taylor series coefficient for the Maclaurin series, where x naught is 0, is going to be the nth derivative of f at 0 over n factorial. And so we have a very nice uh, formula for this. Well, C naught is going to be equal to so 1 plus 0 to the alpha, which is going to be 1 to the alpha, or 1 over 0 factorial, which is just 1. C1 is going to be alpha times 1 plus 0 to the alpha minus 1, which is going to be alpha over 1 factorial, or alpha. C2 is going to be alpha times alpha minus 1, or, uh, and then this is uh, at x equals 0, so it's 1 plus 0 to the alpha minus 2, which is 1 to the alpha, alpha minus 2, or 1. This will be over 2 factorial.
C3 is going to be alpha times alpha minus 1 times alpha minus 2. And then this is times 1 plus 0 to the alpha minus 3, which is going to be 1 over 3 factorial. And this continues all the way down. To the coefficient cn, which is going to be alpha times alpha minus 1 times alpha minus 2, all the way to alpha minus n plus 1 times 1 plus 0 to the alpha minus n, which is going to be 1 over n factorial. And there you have it. We have uh, the direct formula right here for our coefficients. And we have that 1 plus x to the power alpha will be equal to c naught, which is 1 plus c1 times x to the 1, which is going to be alpha times x plus this is c naught, this is c1 times x, this is next term is c2 times x squared, it's going to be alpha times alpha minus 1 over 2 factorial, which is 2, alpha times alpha minus 1 over 2 times x squared, plus alpha times alpha minus 1 times alpha minus 2 over 3 factorial, which is 6 times x cubed, and so on and so forth, all the way up to the nth term, which is alpha times alpha minus 1, all the way up to alpha minus n plus 1 over n factorial times x to the power n, and this continues on infinitely long. And there you have it. This is the Taylor series expansion of this function for any value of alpha, for any real value of alpha. Now you can go through uh, using the limit definition, using the ratio test for the radius of convergence to show that the radius of convergence for the series, infinite series, is equal to 1. Uh, and that's using the ratio test uh, formula for the radius of convergence that I, I showed before. So just doing the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of cn over cn plus 1. Um, I'm not going to do that right here, but uh, it's a good exercise to go through and do that uh, for any general value of alpha. Uh, and it simplifies out really nicely to be equal to 1. And what's really nice about what I've just done here is uh, directly, you know, get a number of different very nice results. So for example, if you want to figure out the Taylor series of 1 plus x to the 1 half, or the square root of 1 plus x, you can just use what we've done right here to say that, well, the first few terms of this are going to be 1 plus 1 half times x plus we one half times one half minus one over two times x squared plus one half times one half minus one times one half minus two over six times x cubed 
and so on and so forth. Right? You can go up as high as you want to using this exact formula right here. And so I just went through and calculated each one of these values to give you the exact coefficients of the first uh, first four terms in this Taylor series expansion for the function 1 plus x to the 1 half. This is uh, a relationship that appears very, very often in, uh, in physics and in engineering. So this specific Taylor series expansion with uh, power 1 plus x to the power 1 half is very uh, important in many, many different applications, uh, specifically in physics. But uh, the idea here is that the, the beauty of kind of doing this uh, in general for general alpha uh, is that we can go through and get all sorts of different uh, different functions, um, or different Taylor series expansions. So for instance, if we have uh, the function 1 minus x to the power negative 3 halves, or 1 over 1 minus x to the 3 halves, if this is our function that we're trying to find the expansion of, then we can go through and directly use uh, the formula that we just, just derived. Uh, we have to be a little bit careful here um, because this expression is not entirely in the form that we want to apply this formula. We have to use the substitution theorem. Uh, 1 minus x is the same thing as 1 plus negative x in parentheses to the power negative three halves and we think of this as some u that we're substituting here this is the same thing as one plus u to the negative three halves so by the substitution theorem for power series this is the same thing as one plus alpha times u, so it'll be negative 3 halves times u, plus negative 3 halves times negative 3 halves minus 1 over 2 factorial, which is 2 times u squared plus negative three halves times negative three halves minus one times negative three halves minus two over three factorial which is six u cubed and so on and so forth and so the final step here is to go through and plug in the value of u here, what u, what u is uh, by the substitution, and u is negative x. So this is going to result when we plug negative x in for u here into our infinite series. So the final step here is to go through and uh, just compute these values. I'm only going to do up to the third term just like before, but um, the idea here is that you could do up to uh, any number of values that you want for the nth expansion, the nth order expansion. So this will be 1 minus 3 halves times negative x plus this coefficient right here, which will be 15 eighths times negative x squared plus this coefficient right here, which will be negative 35 over 16, times 
times negative x cubed, and so on and so forth, which is going to be equal to 1 plus 3 halves x plus 15 over 8 x squared plus 35 over 16 x cubed, and so on and so forth, all the way to infinity. This is the Taylor series for the function 1 over 1 minus x to the 3 halves. And here we use the substitution theorem, so uh, we need to make sure that the absolute value of u is less than the radius of convergence of this series, which is 1, um, which means that the absolute value of negative x has to be less than 1. But this gives us the, uh, the, the range of validity for this equality right here, which is very, very neat. So for the next example, what I want to do is uh, go over um, an example that uses one of the other properties for power series or manipulation techniques for power series that we talked about. And that was uh, taking the product of series. Let's say we want the power series of some function h of x, which is f of x times g of x. This, for example, we'll say, um, say h of x is the function uh, square root of x, or 1 plus x, times the function sine of x. So uh, if we want to find the Taylor series of this, this function, product of these two, two uh, functions, uh, you could go through and say, well, uh, we'll try and go through directly with method one and use the formula Cn is equal to Fn. And I'm just going to do the Maclaurin series because this is going to give me the easiest form for the coefficients. But very quickly, you're going to realize that this is not a good idea. Right. Try taking the first derivative of this function. you got to take the derivative of the square root of 1 plus x, multiply it by sine of x, and then add the derivative of sine of x times square root of 1 plus x from the product rule. Um, that's, not, that's not nice. It's going to be very long. Uh, and then furthermore, you're going to have to do this again and again and again right? for every single term uh, cn. Right? Developing, taking these derivatives and developing a general pattern uh, not be super nice to do. So uh, I 100% do not recommend going through and using method one here. It's not that you couldn't do it for the first couple terms if you really wanted to, uh, but I don't recommend it here. Uh, what I do recommend doing is using the relationship for the product of series. So um, You'll remember that we know how to take the product of power series. This is a very nice formula in the book um, that I went over in the power series lecture. And right, we have the power series for either of these two, or no, it's for either, for both of these two functions. So, um, we saw that the Maclaurin series expansion for 1 plus x is going to be 1 plus uh, square, square root of 1 plus x is going to be 1 plus 1 half x minus 1 eighth x squared plus 1 sixteenth x cubed. That's 1 minus 1 half x plus 1 eighth x squared minus 1 sixteenth x cubed. And this does go on to infinity, but this was the power series that we found in the previous problem right, for uh, this expansion. Oops, and I just realized this should be positive. This should be negative and this should be positive. Sorry for that mistake. 
And we also know that the Taylor series expansion for Sign of X is this very nice series. Summation from k equals 0 to infinity of a negative 1 to the k over 2k plus 1 factorial times x to the 2k plus 1 which uh, ends up being x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial, right, and so on and so forth. All the terms here. That's what this infinite series is for sine of x. So we have two power series being multiplied by one another. And um, you do have to be a little bit careful using the formulas that I wrote down for um, the uh, infinite series expansion because uh, this has a non-zero coefficient for each one of the terms uh, in the sum. So for each power of x here, we have a non-zero coefficient. But uh, for the sine series, you really want to kind of emphasize here that um, right, you're, you're not kidding, or there's, a, there's, there's, there's not a non-zero coefficient for each one of the powers. In fact, for each of the even powers of x, the coefficient's going to be zero. This is one of the things that I really want to emphasize here. And um, you can you could go through and just do a brute force multiplication without writing it like this in terms of the formula, but I want to connect this example to the multiplication formula that I wrote down in the previous lecture. So this is going to be 0 times x to the 0. 0 plus x right, plus 0 times x squared plus 0 times x to the 4 plus 0 times x to the 5th, and so on and so forth. So this is important because if this is a series, this is a naught plus a1 times x plus a2 times x squared plus a3 times x cubed, and so on and so forth. And this series is b, b naught is 0 plus b1 times x plus b2 times x squared plus b3 times x to the fourth, plus b4 times x to the fifth, and so on and so forth. And so you'll recall that uh, our general formula for the multiplication of two power series uh, is going to be a new power series with coefficient c0, c1 times x, c2 times x squared, c3 times x cubed, and so on and so forth, with coefficients given by cn is equal to a0 times bn plus a1 times bn minus 1 plus a2 times b n minus 2 all the way up to a n minus 1 times b 1 plus a n times b naught. This is the general formula for the coefficients of the multiplication of two power series. Um, and you can see this very clearly, right, just by kind of thinking of how FOIL works for a plus b times c plus d from an algebra class, think of doing FOIL on each one of these terms right here in this series, multiply by each one of the terms in this series. Uh, this is where this is coming from. So we can quickly go through and write down then this is going to be c naught is a naught times b naught, be 1 times 0. Or 0, C1 is going to be uh, A0 times B1, 1 times 1, plus uh, A1 times B0, which 
which is 1 half times 0 plus C2, which is going to be A0 times B2, or 1 times 0, plus A1 times B1, which is 1 half times 1, plus A2 times B0, which is negative 1 eighth times 0. The last one, we'll do C3, this will be 1, which is A0, times B3, which is 1 over 3 factorial, or negative 1 over 3 factorial, or negative 6. We A1, which is 1 half, times B2, which is 0. Next one's going to be A3 times B2, which will be negative 1 eighth. times uh, b1, which is 1, is a, a2 times b1. Last one's going to be a3 times b0, which is 1 16th times 0, or 0. You can go through this continuously for any other, uh, you know, as high as you want. It definitely gets more cumbersome the higher you go, but this gives us that h of x is going to be the series x plus 1 half x squared. And we're going to have uh, minus 1 6 plus 1 8, which is negative 7 over 24. x cubed. And this series is the correct series for um, that governs right this product of two functions. This power series converges to this function h of x, where h of x is the product of one plus x, square root of one plus x times sine of x. And so this is really neat. You know, this gives us a general way of multiplying power series together. Uh, and uh, getting the result. Uh, it's a very, very powerful method here. Um, now, you could go through and check this, and sure enough, if you go through and, and do just that, uh, so you look at right, f of 0, you're going to get that uh, f of 0 is exactly 0. It's the value of this function when you plug in 0. Uh, good practice for derivatives. We're going to take the derivative of this function and then plug in 0 to do f prime of 0. And sure enough, when you end up doing that, you end up getting a value of 1. You get that f double prime at 0 for this function also ends up being 1. And that f triple prime of 0 for this function ends up being negative 7 fourths which makes a lot of sense because we're getting negative 7 over 24 for the third coefficient. And from the formula for coefficients, this is the nth derivative of f at 0 over n factorial. So uh, the third coefficient here is going to be negative 7 fourths over 3 factorial, which is 6. This is just negative 7 over 24. And this works out for each one of the coefficients c2, c1, and c0 that I, I derived up here as well. Very, very cool example. Oops, and I just realized that I have a, a slight mistake, not in how I calculated the problem, but just how I wrote the series right here. It doesn't really make sense. So if you notice that, I am super sorry. It should be b3 times x cubed plus b4 times x to the fourth. I'm sure at least one, one or two of you were wondering why I, I wrote the power series like this. And this is just a slight, a slight mistake for these coefficients. B0 is 0 for sign, the sine series. B1 is 1. B2 is 0. And so on and so forth.
And so I just wanted to show that this is working and it's actually working very nicely. And uh, to do this, um, I went through and uh, you know expanded upon the, the Taylor series or power series plotter uh, that I gave to you uh, on the canvas page. Um, and specifically, right, we're dealing with uh, two functions, the functions uh, one plus x to the one half. Uh, so that's this f of x right here. I actually did it in general, one plus x to the alpha. Um, so I can actually kind of change the alpha value if I want to um, kind of visualize this for different values of alpha. But I'm just going to stick with the value of alpha that we use in the problem, which is one half. Um, and also, uh, I have function g of x, which is sine of some o times x, where o is the, the frequency um, or related to the frequency of the sine wave. So in, in the problem that we just calculated, we did o is equal to 1, because we just had sine of x. So that's this function right here. That's what it looks like from negative 1 to 1. And if I Make this a little bit smaller, you'll see that, uh, or change the, the scale a little bit, you'll see that this is the standard sine function. Um, and for this problem, the uh, interval of convergence, if you go through and calculate it, is going to be from uh, negative 1 to 1, because from our, our product theorem, or the power series, um, we always have to you know shrink the radius of convergence to the smaller function. We have that the radius of convergence for this function, the square root of 1 plus x, is just from uh, the radius of convergence is 1 of the Taylor series, so it converges from negative 1 to 1. The sine series converges everywhere, but we have to choose the smaller radius of convergence when we're doing a product of these two series. So we only expect convergence in this interval right here. But what I want to do to, is uh, directly show and demonstrate that, like, even if I say, like, let's say change this function a little bit, you'll get different series than the one I calculated in the lecture video uh, a little bit earlier. But um, this is still working for many, many different uh, examples. So I just raise the frequency of the sine wave here. And um, what I want to do is show you what the product function looks like first. So the product of this function with this function looks like this. This is h of x right here. I'm going to remove those two other plots. This is what the function looks like. And we expect to get convergence of the Taylor series from negative 1 to 1 on this. And sure enough, if we had Desmos go through and, or GeoGebra go through and plot this, this is only for n equals 1. This is the Taylor approximation for n equals 1. If I increase n, takes a little bit longer to compute the coefficients at every uh, every value of n. But you're seeing extremely nice convergence of this Taylor series on the interval from negative 1 to 1. And around the endpoints, it's not super nice, right? But um, rest assured, you, when you solve for the radius of convergence, you get 1. And if I increase the number of terms in this series to say, 300 or 200, you'll get very nice convergence right here, and then uh, very nice convergence right here as well. Um, not necessarily at the points, because we haven't tested those two points yet, so we don't know if they converge or not, but that would be a good exercise to go through and do. So just to uh, reiterate you know, what I mentioned when I was showing the plot, um, we know that the, uh, the radius of convergence for that sine of x series, so for this series right here, is when the absolute value of x is less than positive infinity. It converges uh, for every single value of x on the real number line. But uh, the radius of convergence for this series is only 1. So because of that, the series that we've obtained for h of x has a radius of convergence of only one or an interval of convergence from negative one to one. You have to 
choose when you're multiplying series together like this, you have to choose the series with the smaller radius of convergence because um, right, uh, this series is valid everywhere, but this series is only valid, um, or the square root of 1 plus x is only equal to this series uh, when the absolute value of x is less than 1. So this is a very important point to point out here. But um, I think this will be all for the lecture today. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you learned something and that you had a great day.